Hello everybody, this is the Aris X140. Featuring 1407 3700 kV brushless motors. It came stock with these 3050C props. I'm told they swapped them out for the Gemfan 3052s. F4 flight controller with an OSD, 20 amp 4 in 1 ESC, power switchable VTX, 0 milliwatts, 25, 100, 200 milliwatts. It also has smart audio for changing channels. Official Runcam Micro Swift with a 2.1 millimeter lens. It has a buzzer and two LEDs, XT30 for your battery connection. I added the capacitor. Mine weighs 140 and a half grams. Bottom plate is three millimeters. Side plates are Two and a half. I think this middle piece is 1.5 millimeter carbon. From motor post to motor post, I'm getting 140 millimeters. I flew it with GNB 550 4S batteries. It also comes with Velcro for your battery, a connector presumably for your receiver, a USB cable, and some documentation. So I am happy that they switched out the props because I am a much bigger fan of the Jim Fan 3052 props than I am of those other props. I just, I, I think it has a lot to do with my flying environment because I do so much tight quartering that I have an affinity for those props that have a little bit of a tip and grip to them and uh, I enjoy flying those more. So that, that's a personal thing though, you may feel completely different. But as you can see, we've got good punch outs. And another thing I should say, and I've, I've said this over the time, so if you heard it before, I apologize, is typically when I fly quads, when I review them, I do turn on motor braking and motor stop. And the reason why I do that is it helps to keep me below the canopy. If I get out of shape in some way and I've got to get down quick, if I don't have those things turned on, then I end up a little bit high and I tend to crash a little bit more and sometimes those can be quite violent. Some of you may have wondered where that come from. It's something that I do. But you have to have a particular kind of machine, and quite frankly, in this video, I'm not very happy with how it turned out. It get kind of to where I'm drifting out towards the front of the house too much. I like to kind of stay over the shed, that brown spot, which does make it a kind of a, a daunting maneuver because you're looking at what kind of looks like dirt or the ground is kind of your target, but it's about eight foot off the ground. So you know that's something that you have to plan for when you come down. I do it once again here a little bit later on in the flight. But I think this machine flies well, but there's one big thing that you have to note is I reverse the VTX to get the limited camera angle that I do have. The VTX connector comes towards the front and it lines up with the camera connector and the camera that we have in here doesn't have the ability to flip so that you can mount the camera upside down so you can get that connector um, to the lower portion to where it doesn't conflict. So you've got these two connectors creating some bulk and that really limits your camera angle. So it's not as though the machine isn't powerful or fast but because of the limited camera angle that I'm forced to fly with, I'm not necessarily going quite my normal speed. So uh, it's something to consider, even with the camera angle that I have, which I think is probably somewhere close to 25 or 30 degrees, it might be a little bit more than that. Uh, we're coming in here for a little soft landing and we get a little bit over two minutes again. That's on the GNB 554S. I think a 650 would be in order. I do have one crash to show you. It's fairly dramatic. It's not a high speed crash, but I did dead center a tree and I'm happy to report that uh, the carbon turned out just fine. It didn't delaminate or split any of the ends at all. I don't know where exactly it hit. I suspect here just because it's dirty. It might have just squared up and hit everywhere. Uh, the motors are fine. I flew it a number of times after that. Um, and it's it's good fun. I do think that the, the only drawback that you have to be aware of, I've already mentioned, is that the VTX, I did have to reverse to get that connector away. It's on this side. You can see it better. So the VTX and the camera connector lined right up, and so that decreased your camera angle. And that's, hopefully you can see that a little bit, that's the camera angle that I was flying at in that video. And it didn't necessarily feel slow in the goggles, but reviewing the vi the footage, it did look quite a bit slower than what I normally fly at in the backyard. But it did make it quite a bit easier to fly, but I like to challenge myself and go faster and faster and do different stuff sometimes. Uh, they do have some nice tape on here. It's a little bit big, but, you know, I, I think this tape, I, it caught my eye because it's, I think it's going to hold on well. And I kind of want to get some to try, see if that's a magic tape that I want to do instead of... Uh, the current tapes I've been using. It is kind of fiddly. I mentioned I had to swap or turn around the VTX. Getting this apart is a little bit of a pain because let me look at the bottom here. We can show it a little bit better. Getting these side plates off is a challenge. You can actually, well, because I've got my zip tie in the way, I added that as well. Um, maybe you can see it up here a little bit better. Basically, the gap between there is so narrow. You can see it a little bit right there where I've torn the tape by taking the plates in and out. 
the gap is so narrow that it bumps right up against the edge and you kind of have to pull it from between there. So, uh, you know, that's part of the geometry, their layout of their frame is that there's not much of a gap in there. You can get it apart and put it back together. It is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, you probably also, I should have drawn your attention to it during the flight video, but there was a fair bit of noise, and that's after I added a capacitor. The capacitor helped, but it didn't help a lot. Uh, so I'm not certain what's going on there. I did notice that the VTX is wired directly to the battery pads. If the VTX can take 5 volt, maybe we should wire it to the flight controller and get that extra level of filtering from the flight controller if it can support it. Uh, but normally when you're buying something like this, you don't want to fiddle with it. You want it to work out of the box. You want to maybe add your receiver or bind a receiver and then go fly. It is tight under there. Hopefully you saw it earlier. I have my receiver which is an XM Plus. It's really hard to see. Actually, you can see my foam right here, but the receiver is actually in the roof because the pressure when I added everything back in made the receiver go from laying flat on the board to comes up. Um, it hasn't been moving around. And of course, I've got it secured down with these uh, antennas in the uh, zip ties and the heat shrink. So it's, it's fine like that. I just wish it had a touch more space. And it's kind of reduced in space because they use so much soft mounting, which is a good thing. Hopefully you can see it all the way around. It's soft mounted from top to bottom. We've got rubber O-rings down in here. We've got these rubber grabbits in here, and they do go through the flight controller. So that's a particular rarity in microboards, especially, is that you have a grommet that goes all the way through the board. So you should have good uh, vibration protection. You can see, well, if I can hold my hand still and squeeze it. There we go. And it should move around because it's got the gummy. It, it'll move around all the way around. And then you've got two more O-rings up there. And then you've got your nut on top. So all sorts of soft mounting. And I'm pleased that it's not sloppy. Sometimes when you get all that soft mounting, it can get kind of sloppy in there. Uh, in this particular case, it's not. Uh, it, it It's fairly rigid. So I've got things tightened back down enough to where the stack is good. And it probably came like this with the stack nice and tight to where it wasn't sloppy. I just didn't note it particularly because I was just trying to get a little bit of camera angle. So in the flight video, I was talking about how I typically fly with motor braking and motor stop on so I can get down under the canopy real quick when I get when I lower the throttle. And if you're not familiar, what motor braking does is it actively slows down the prop. So instead of it just spinning down freely to the level of throttle that you're at, it actually tries to stop it. So motor braking. But because in this case I didn't, um, that you would see those punch outs would be a little bit higher. I could float a little bit more and that's something when you're flying that you have to consider what sort of environments you're going to be flying in most likely and set your ESCs appro appropriately. If you're going to be flying underneath canopies, I, I presume most racers fly with motor braking on just to make sure they can stay low and get through gates as well, but I don't know any racers, so you tell me. Do racers use motor braking? Um, I do, but you may not want to, but this particular flight gives you an idea of what it looks like when you don't use motor braking and the float and kind of the gracefulness of the machine through the air. Uh, in other videos, you can go back and look at those, and if you were impressed with the punch out, and I don't mention the fact that I'm flying with motor braking or not, it means I am flying with it, and then you can actually increase of what you see visually as far as the float time and the thrust upward, it will actually be a little bit more visually. I did have to tune it up a bit, so you will see my PIDs, and those PIDs are set for 4S. I did not fly the machine on 3S. You can equally fly it on 3S. It will just be a little bit more modest in performance, but if you've got 3S batteries and or you've got other 3S quads and you just want to try one of these out, it'll be perfectly fine. It just won't quite fly like you saw on the flight footage. I think this is a good machine. You know, it comes in at $139. You can get it from Hobbywing.com. Um, you might even be able to find this on Amazon. If I can find an Amazon link, I'll put it in the section down below. Uh, it's just got that issue with the camera angle, and for many people, they might not have an issue with it. Maybe, because a lot of even pro pilots don't fly with a lot of camera angle. So I bring that up only to bring it to your attention, not to say that that is a deal breaker. It's something that you have to evaluate whether it's important to you or not. That this is the maximum camera angle that you can get. Hopefully I can get this to the side. So it's about like that. So I would say 30 to 35 degrees probably. So that's that's the max without doing more than what I've done already. And then you're probably looking at 
uh, changing out some of the soft mounting and things of that nature. I think that's the only issue really that it has. I wasn't unhappy with the flight performance. I do think that I needed to use a larger battery so I could get a little bit longer flight time. You know we're only at two minutes. We did what four or five punch outs over the house and then some you know all the sharp turns that I do around the trees. So two minutes isn't terrible. It by no means is bad because I've done minute 45 flights on 550 milliamp 4S batteries before on other quads. So that, that's about where I expect them to come in in my experience. But if you're getting one of these or you have a machine like this, you're probably flying a 650 and maybe even more depending upon your favorite brand of battery. But I do like the GNB 550s just because it keeps me nimble. Um, that way if I do get out of shape, I can quickly correct more weight can ha equal more drag or pull into corners or make it more difficult to get away from objects but I fly close with all these trees uh, a little fact I'll give you a little bit about me you see all these trees around our yard when we first moved in the first two years I cut down 13 trees many of them were just kind of sapling baby trees I would say half of them maybe were baby trees you know under 15 feet um, I'm guessing with that number but the rest of them were pretty mature trees and we still have all those trees and my wife was so upset when I cut down one of the trees she came home from work and saw it laying on the ground in pieces and <laughs> I got in a little bit of trouble so I have a lot of trees I try to fly around them it's fun for me uh, if you have any comments or questions about this quad please let me know in the section down below I appreciate your time and thanks for watching